I swear, it was just good luck that put me into the position I'm in, or perhaps considering how it's going right now, it was bad luck. But it's not about me. Uh, if I wasn't here, someone else would be. It was inevitable. It was all just the timing of when I lost my sign-spinning job. I was on my way home from my last day at Chuck's Chicken, still in my costume, when I saw the sign, the first sign. A smallish poster was pasted to one of those concrete columns downtown, uh, the ones always covered in posters for art shows nobody goes to. It said, help wanted in big block letters and had a QR code in the corner. I stood staring at it, standing on the side of the street in my chicken costume, which I had been required to buy from Chuck's when I started there. I stared at it as dozens of people just walked by and I thought, what's the worst that could happen? And I scanned the code to see where it led. It would probably be some dumb art thing or a scam or something, but it also might be a legit job. The code downloaded a small app called Special Installation, and it immediately gave me an assignment. There was no option to accept or decline, just an address and a note that 50 euros would be paid upon completion of the installation. I know how it seems. You think I'm trying to play the fool, the unwitting accomplice? But you have to understand, I really was unwitting. I was broke and desperate and... Anyway, I went to the address. It was a print shop. The app informed me that there was a box waiting there for me. I got some looks for the chicken suit, but they gave me the box when I showed my ID to confirm that the reservation was for me. The app then gave a new address where I was to take the box. I arrived at another concrete pillar. In the box was more of the small posters like the one I'd scanned before and the paste needed to mount them. The app gave me the instructions I needed and when it was done, 50 euros appeared in my account. It was easy money and when I looked back to the app, it was giving me another address. It took me to another pillar. I put up eight more posters before the app went blank. The box was empty and I was exhausted, so I went back to my apartment to sleep. 500 euros richer than I'd been that morning. That was more than I would make in two weeks of sign dancing for Chucks. The next morning, I was excited to open the app to see if something was new for me, and it was. 1,000 euros, it promised. So I was off as soon as I'd eaten a quick breakfast. This time, though, there was no print shop run. When I got to the address, a parking lot in the suburbs, there were four other people already there, standing next to a lorry, several looking anxiously at their mobiles. As I approached one of them, a shortish blonde woman, I never learned any of their names, said, Oh, I've got something. She read from her screen, Open the small grey box. One of the others, a heavyset heavy man with a moustache, who I later learned was a driver, turned to the rear of the lorry and opened the door. Just inside, amongst many other boxes, was a small grey packet. He took it out and handed it to the blonde woman, who took out a box cutter and folded open the package. Inside were five dark blue button-up shirts, clearly in the correct sizes for those assembled, and which had emblazoned across the shoulders, special installation. My mobile buzzed with a message from the app, it said, put it on. <laughs> I shrugged and took the one in my size from the woman and pushed my arms into it. I don't really like uniforms, but it was a damn sight better than a chicken suit anyway. The app had us get into the truck then. The blonde woman and the driver up front and the other three of us in the back. Those other two I don't remember much about, honestly, except that one had a big wad of keys in his pocket that kept jabbing me in the thigh as we rode cramped together in the back of the small cab. Our, our destination was back downtown and working together with instructions from the app, 
the five of us handily put up a giant digital screen on the side of an old warehouse facing the freeway. This is the one that most people think of as the first billboard, but as I said, those little ones downtown came before. We turned it onto the same simple message, help wanted, it said. 1,000 euro dropped into my account. I don't know if the others all got the same, but everyone was happy when we parted. The next day was a similar job with a new set of people, and everyone but me was just getting their shirt. The other members of the team thus looked to me for a bit of leadership and assurance that this was all real. I assured them that it was, and we got to work. We put billboards up all over the town over the next weeks, some large, some small, some paper, some digital, but always that same message. Sometimes I saw workers a second or a third time, but mostly I was grouped up with new people for each job. I once drove past another group working and saw that the lorry driver from the second day seemed to be in the lead of that group. I'm sure you remember this part. More and more of those shirts started showing up. You couldn't walk a block in town without seeing three or four blue special installation shirts. You started to see news stories around that time about this great new employer. Entirely app-based, non-discriminating, high-paying. People flocked to work for special installation and it always found some work for everyone who came along. The news reports tried to find who was in charge of the company, a CEO or a director or something, or even a developer for the software team, but none could be found. That's when I gave the first TV interview you saw. Some of the other workers had pointed out me as a person in charge, but I had to tell the reporters I was just another employee. After that, I started getting different kinds of jobs from the SI app. A blue business suit was delivered to my apartment, along with a box of business cards. I was vice director of resources and relations, and while the other workers continued to put up billboards, I was giving speeches, conducting interviews, negotiating important deals, all while the app was telling me exactly what to do and how to say it. I'd always wanted to be an actor, so I approached this role from that angle. I didn't know anything about business, but I didn't need to, and the money kept rolling in more and more every day. Of course, the message on the screens had changed, probably to deal with all the copycats trying to capitalize on the original simple message by advertising their own wares and scams with similar billboards. Now they all said, specialinstallation.com with no other explanation. Everyone knew what it was and more people signed up every minute. After I got that promotion, I noticed others start to specialize also. Special installation branched out to city infrastructure, hiring people to rebuild bridges and replace light poles. It expanded into media, hiring the newscasters and talking heads away from the old networks and buying up newspapers by the handful. SI bought property in every major city and set up offices and apartment buildings with very low rent. They grabbed up controlling shares of the major food corporations and replaced most of the board members. That's when the government started getting suspicious, but it was too late, of course. They launched a special investigation into SI and tried to force the CEO, whoever they were, out into the open for special sessions. At one point, I was summoned to the capital, but the app gave me 5,000 euros just to refuse to, to attend, so I did. After that, my job changed again. I went campaigning. I was giving speeches at political rallies and protests now. I thought it was weird, but I couldn't stop. The app was telling me where to go, what to do, and the money was so good. Despite it all, I was surprised when I was elected to the governorship. 
I knew as much about politics as I did about business, and I think now, looking back, that was exactly what SI wanted. I followed the instructions, and my bank account grew. I climbed the ranks easily over the next few years, winning every special election and passing every suggested change. When I was elected High Director, and the rest of the government was peaceably dissolved, <laughs> I was past surprise, and I was enjoying my life quite a bit. My mansion was filled with blue shirts, as was most of the country, and I knew it was also happening in other countries around the world. But it wasn't bad, right? There was <laughs> no poverty, no homelessness, no illness, no hunger. Everyone was so happy in their blue shirts. Everyone was doing the thing that was best suited to their place and their talents. We were making a better world. What did it matter if it was all under the direction of this simple app? I felt like I was doing good work. Sometimes I felt like a bit of a puppet, but that didn't matter. It was all infinitely better than dancing for chucks, and everyone else was doing better also. <coughs> I honestly didn't know about your little rebellion until you stormed into my office this afternoon, <sighs> and I think you're doing the wrong thing. Was your government taken over by an unknown entity? Yes. Was it totally lawful? Maybe not. Do we fully understand all the motivations of the creation of this utopia? I would agree that we don't, but now that you've unseated me from my throne, what will you do? You think you can fight off all of the employees of SI? <laughs> Even if you kill me, you think it'll stop there. This isn't about me. It was never about me. Trust me. What you want to do, what you need to do, is install the app. <laughs> Let it take you where you should go next. Let it fill your accounts with money and your life with purpose. You can't fight progress and trust me, there's no room left in this world for the unemployed. <laughs>